Welcome to Sports Jam. Everybody get up, it's time for sports now. We got a real show going down. Welcome to the sports jam. Sports it's jam. your chance, talking rant. It's the sports jam. All right. Hey man, you can't get any better than that. All right, welcome to the sports jam here on AM 1230 WJOB. Mike Zajac. Here in studio, with intern Joe still. Intern still. Joe a few O'Rourke more weeks here. till we go back to school. Just a few. Joe O'Rourke, Sam Sapita is back. What's going on? Sam, how was uh, how was your Notre Dame baseball camp? It was great. It, playing three days of straight baseball, nothing like it. How'd you do? I did pretty well. Uh, there was a lot of scouts there from like Notre Dame, Michigan State, Louisville, some smaller colleges. I think I did pretty well. I mean, there were some pretty outstanding athletes there. So I think, I think I fit maybe above, like above the middle of the pack. So I thought I did pretty well. No, uh, no major mess ups. No major mess ups. Did you did you get to mingle a little with any of these college uh, people and well, I talked get to, your name out there and a, make them remember you? The coach from Wabash was there. I was thinking about playing. I might try to uh, walk on Wabash when I'm. The the all boys school thing appeals to you. <laughs> No. <laughs> Wait, you want to walk on? Or you're not going to get a scholarship? They don't have athletic scholarships at Wabash. Really? They don't have any? No. What if you get a scholarship, let's say, a smaller school? Like St. Joseph's you College, like Saint, D2. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, that'd be great. I just, I'd like, I'd love to play baseball at the next level. It'd be pretty, it'd be pretty great. Well, from our experience at college and paying, God knows how much money when we graduate. Take the scholarship. I would. Yeah, definitely. That's just me. If you can go um, to college with mo- with no? money off, it's definitely a way to go. No, I mean I can't really speak to that because I'm luckily I have parents who are helping me out right. with college. Right. So, me but, too, but for anyone who's paying for it themselves, oh yeah, I'm talking take like whatever money you can get. I'm talking loans and stuff like that. You know, grants. Yeah, yeah. definitely. All right. So the date today is. Oh, Debbie hasn't changed yet. Hasn't changed is correct. It is Thursday, July 25th, and um, let's talk about the White Sox, who are actually playing right now. They're currently in the third inning, bottom of the third. They're up 2 nothing over the Tigers. Jake Peavy is doing, um, he's doing something special. I'm not going to talk about it. It's superstitious, too. It's only a third inning. Is he throwing a perfect game? I'm not saying anything. All right. It's only a third inning. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see what happens. Cubs fan bringing that up. Yep, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, no less would be expected. It, he's not going to get it. I didn't say anything. I don't know what you. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So the White Sox lost six to two again last night. They lost by that same six to two score the day before. Dings pitched seven innings allowed, eleven hits, six earned runs, one walk, and three strikeouts. Diaz went three for four with a walk and a stolen base. Diane Viciedo went three for four, hit his ninth home run, his second in two days, and Alexi Ramirez made his seventeenth error of the season. So far in this series against Detroit. The White Sox, have, not counting today's game, the White Sox have scored seven runs. They've committed eight errors. Pretty solid. More errors than runs scored. Not counting today, they have two. So now they're, you know, I don't know if they have an error yet, but they have at least nine runs today and maybe eight errors only <laughs> in four games. Jesse Crane pitched yesterday, uh, but it did not go so well. Pitching coach Don Cooper saying that he had a slight setback and he may not return to the team until after the trading deadline, which would be a huge, huge disappointment. What was the setback? He just said that he was tired. He wasn't feeling 100%. His, he's feeling sore, so he's going to rest for a few days, give it another shot. Obviously, some teams like the Cardinals and, and other teams with bullpen help could really use Jesse Crane, the Braves as well. We heard about uh, Phil Rogers say that as soon as Crane's healthy, the Braves will take him, but now – that he may not be activated until after the trade deadline, it means the Braves or whoever else will either trade for a player on the DL, which we know the Sox did with PV in 2009, right? or they wait until after the uh, 31st and trade him in August, which means he has to pass through waivers, which means a team is going to claim Jesse Crane. In the, it starts in the NL the way the waivers work is you start in the opposite league, 
with the worst record and then move on to the best team. So the Cubs have a chance. So, yeah, okay. So the Cubs, <laughs> the Cubs would p- be picking, I don't know, fourth or something in the right. in the NL. So, yeah, they could take Jesse Crane if they wanted. But the thing about that is whoever claims them, the Sox would have to make an agreement with that team or else there's no trade. And they have to wait, I think, a, I think a, maybe a week or a certain amount of period, and then I think they may be able to put him back on waivers. But either way, this is a big blow to not be able to trade him before the 31st. As I said, Jake Peavy is facing off right now against Justin Verlander. He has a perfect game. In uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's doing well. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But uh, hopefully Jake Peavy does well. It could be his last start with the White Sox. There's a lot of scouts on hand. I think I saw there's at least six teams represented uh, there watching him right now. So hopefully he can continue doing whatever he is doing right now against the Tigers. As I said, I don't even know. I can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. But if he does do that, his value is going to go through the roof, at least for today. And we'll see if some team gets anxious and says, oh, my gosh, that just happened, and then trade for him. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. The Cubs won 7-6 to six against Arizona late last night in 12 innings. Tell us about that game, Mike. Yeah, DeJesus finally came back, goes 2-for-6, a double, two runs. The Lake Effect, Junior Lake, 2-for-5, two, two doubles in RB, RBI. He's batting a 5-19. You see a Puig? Huh? Who? Who's that? I don't even know. I don't know either. Nate Sheerholtz, 3-for-6, five RBIs. Five RBIs, including the home run. Greg Blow blows a save in the ninth. Cody Ross at sack fly scoring Paul Goldschmidt. But in the twelfth, Sheerholtz game winning double to left field scored Anthony Rizzo. The Cubs are three and three in the, the second half, and will play Arizona tonight in the finale at eight forty. Nate Sheerholtz has raised his average almost ten points since the All Star break, and he has two home runs and eight RBIs. He's, really? He's improving his stock. He's still not all-star worthy like that caller we had a couple of weeks ago yeah. who said it should have been Sheerholtz in there instead of Travis Wood. Sheerholtz got off to a great start at the beginning of the season. Everybody thought he was going to be the, the all-star for the Cubs, but he fell apart in May, June-ish. So. Yeah, they, they um, you know, Sheerholtz keeps us up for another week. Maybe someone would take him. Maybe. I mean, if he hits a couple more home runs, I think he's hitting up to I think he's hitting 277 now. I mean, that's not bad. If he gets his average up to 285 by next week, someone could definitely pick him up. As Sheerholz could be gone, Soriano might be gone. We could have Junior Lake in the outfield with, who knows, maybe some rookie coming up. Yeah, I Mike, don't know. Um, Mike Alt play left or right? Uh, he'll probably play third. Third, yeah, right. But, I mean, I don't think that they would waste him this year and throw, no. just to throw him in the outfield. No. Kevin Gregg, his ERA in July, 6.30. Solid. Nine walks in July, 12 hits, only six strikeouts. That's uh, that's not going to work. No, it's Talking not. about Sheerholz raising his stock this week to possibly get traded. Kevin Gregg has pretty much just plummeted in his stock in the past couple weeks how many blown saves does he have uh i don't know i did not look at the blown saves i'm not a big fan of the saves category in itself so i didn't even really look at that why not because it's kind of an arbitrary stat you know it's first of all so wait 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 wait, wait, wait. okay mar <laughs> you don't like how mariano rivera has all these saves and he's going to be a hall of famer no, i didn't say that well you, you don't like the save stat so. yeah but he had <laughs> That's not the only reason why Mariano Rivera is going to be a Hall of Famer. He has plenty of other numbers to go along with it, too. Yeah. But, no, just the save stat. Why Why is it three runs or less you get to save? Why not two runs? Because three runs is an inning. <laughs> That's why. <what? laughs> three runs is an <laughs> inning. Three outs is an inning. <laughs> well, what is, what do you, you know what I'm talking about. And then there's these rules where, like, you can get a save – uh, if the tying run, or if a run that's on base would score, then it would be three or less, and you come in, then it's a save. And then there's a rule where if it's, you can get a save more than nine outs if you're winning by like eight. There's all these goofy rules for saves. Saves a lot depends on your team. If your team wins by more than three runs each day, you can't get a save. So then it doesn't, you don't look as valuable. What, what should the rule be to you? What should it be? Yeah. I don't. What's your? I mean, just get rid of it. Really? Yeah. Just why get not? rid of the save. Yeah. 
I mean, I get why it's still there because it's right. always been there. Blah 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 blah. But I, I don't look at closers by oh, this guy's leading the league in saves. He must be really good. Yeah. Because some teams, some guys have more opportunities now. Save percentage is a better stat, I think. The amount of saves you convert versus the opportunities you've had. That says more to me than just saves or just blown saves because you don't know, you know, how many opportunities. Just like errors, 17 errors for Alex Ramirez is a lot, but we don't know how many opportunities he's had. Maybe he's seen way more balls at short than anyone else, so his right. fielding percentage is actually better. Stuff like that. So, anyway, I got a little bit off topic there, but maybe we'll talk about saves and wins and how much I hate both of those uh, in a day coming up soon. As you said, the Cubs will face the Dimebacks tonight and Wade Miley at 840, Chase Field, Carlos Villanueva on the bump for the Cubs. I uh, got a little bit of Bears news. Defensive tackle Cedric Ellis, the former first-round pick of the Saints, did not report to Bears camp. You know why he didn't report to Bears camp, Mike? Uh, he retired. Yep, he retired. He said, I'm done, Dunzo. 28-year-old, signed a $1 million deal with the Bears this spring, and then he just decided he didn't want to play anymore. Yeah, five five seasons out of uh, UCLA played for the Saints. Twelve and a half sacks in those five years, 2.4 per year. 28's not very old. No. Seems like a scam to me. Yeah, we were, well, we were talking about this off the air uh, before the show. So he signed this $1 million deal, 500000 of which was guaranteed, and then he had a bonus of like 350000 mm-hmm. The Bears are going to try and – get that bonus money back that 350,000 or whatever it was they're going to try and argue that one back Mm -hmm. but the guaranteed 500,000 he gets no matter what so I was talking with Sam maybe Cedric Ellis decided at the end of last season I'm done football's not for me blah 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 and then he decided well maybe I'll just try and get a deal a short deal and then just retire because he hasn't even done anything yet he didn't show up for training camp all he's done this offseason is told his agent give me that deal sign it you know, sign the papers, and then right for spring training or right for uh, camp, he says, "All right, well, I'm done. Give me my half mil. I'm out of here." So it could be a scam, could not be. I don't know. I'm just saying. It sounds like, sounds like an easy five hundred thousand to me, right? Yeah, but so it sounds like. Can they do that? Like just sign. They should get it all back, right? Well, that's. I mean, in football, you have all those that guaranteed money. Yeah, they get it no matter what. Maybe the I don't know. Maybe the Bears can try and argue the rest of that money back too. But I'm pretty sure once you sign that deal, because in football that's how it works. You know where you can cut a player and he only gets what the guaranteed is. Not in baseball where it's 100 percent guaranteed. Right. And in baseball, if you retire, you leave it all. So I think it, it's just different in baseball or different in football that he retired, but he still gets that guaranteed money up front. Got a little bit of Blackhawks news too. They agreed to sign forward Brad Winchester, the 32-year-old forward, likely to just be a role player for the team, I'm thinking, if he even makes the team, uh, or just a roster filler for the Rockford Ice Hogs. I don't see him making an impact, really. Yeah, Winchester has 37 goals, 31 assists, and over 390 NHL games with Edmonton, Dallas, St. Louis, Anaheim, and San Jose. He had nine goals and 18 assists last season with the Milwaukee Admirals of the American Hockey League. Uh, he came in with the Nashville Predators. So, I don't know. I'm guessing he'll go to Rockford. Yeah, Rockford. There's there's a reason why this is just a blurb in the newspaper and not a headline. He's he's not a, a name that's no. probably going to impact the Have team. you ever heard of this guy? No. Brad Winchester? No. no definitely Either not. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's going to do it for us in this first break, unless anything has something to add. No? 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 No. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back on Sports Jam, talk a little bit of Oilmen and Railcats, talk about Redskins possibly changing their name, although it's probably not going to happen, but a couple of former players want it to. And we'll talk about some other Indians and if they should change their name, including Lake Central, all coming up on the Sports Jam. Welcome back to the Sports Jam here on AM12, WJOP. Oh, gosh. All right, the Railcats 
beat the Sioux City Explorers two to one. <laughs> I got him, Sam. <laughs> I told you. Sioux Ox. Sioux Ox. No, I said Psyox before the show. Psyox. And I got I got Sam really good. He he showed me. Yeah, a, I, I got you last week. You did. That. He showed me the uh, the pronunciation on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the Sioux City Explorers two to one. Elaine Quiano goes 18, eight innings, not 18 innings, eight innings, gives up five hits, one run, four strikeouts. Mike Massaro goes one for two, two RBIs, a win. Uh, no, two RBIs. I, my notes are all screwed up here. Christian Vitters goes three for four. They've won four in a row. Tonight at the Steel Yards, Christmas in July. You guys going? No. It's also Thirsty Thursday. Now you guys going? <laughs> yep. Yeah, all right. Yep. <laughs> See, the thing is, if you would have thrown 18 innings, that would be very impressive. I would have. I don't know why I put a one in front of there. I don't know. Dude. I don't know why. The Indiana Playmakers, 11 and under boys baseball tryouts for dedicated players and families. That's That's you, right? It is me. That's you. Even, even though it's not, I just hit with the coach. But Saturday, July 27th at 12 o'clock. Wednesday, July 31st at 7 p.m. And Sunday, August 4th at 12 p.m. Held at Dave Griffin's baseball facility at 1200 West Main Street in Griffith. For more details, please contact Coach Brian Clark at 219-805-7991. Got some local golf as well. Tiffany Curtis of Crown Point tied for 31st in the PGA Junior Series at Purdue, finishing with a three-round total of 252. Jennifer Gaw, I believe, of Valpo, tied for 36 with a total of 255. So congratulations to those two young women. What do you got for us, Joe? I got a little bit of oilman news for today. That you wrote to your, by yourself? I did. Nice. Uh, they're, the game notes that they've been putting out, I don't know if it's because of, like you said, maybe they heard our show and said, we don't want this guy reading yeah, our game I, notes. I think it is. But they don't seem to come out before our show anymore. So, <laughs> anyway. Joe you know, has to do a little more work now. Well, they don't, they don't put a box score out for each <laughs> game, so I can't tell what happened. Right. Not like the Railcats who put a box score out each night or whatever. Yeah. So I all I can do is look at the schedule and see the score when they put it. Sometimes they just put 0-0 with T, and I have to find out two days later anyway. It's a tie. Yeah, okay. Zero zero tie <laughs> on a double header, that's what it said last time. But now it's updated and it says the Oilmen swept a double header versus the Rockford Foresters on Tuesday, and then last night they fell to the Michigan City Lakers four to two. They will play host to the Foresters again tonight at five ten in YD and that's all I got because I don't have game notes, so I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. Call your boy McNamara. You yeah, I should call. Ja- I actually do know one of the interns there, uh, Jackie, this summer. So I should call her, and, and maybe she does the game. Maybe notes. she doesn't get her. Maybe she's doing this just to screw with me. Get her on, Jackie. If you're listening, we want you on right Jackie now. Jackie Lopez, from Griffith, if you're listening, call in. Let us know what's going on with those game notes. I need those. Anyway, yeah, right now, <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about the Redskins. Will can we? You guys sure. allow me to? All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your approval. Sure. I don't get to say anything. So. No, Sam quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the two former Redskins stars, Daryl Green and Art Monk, think that the Redskins should change their name. Team owner Dan Snyder and NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said that won't be happening anytime soon. Back in May, 10 congressmen sent a letter to the team urging a name change as well. The congressman argued that the R word to Native Americans is the same as the N word to black people in this country. Do you guys feel the name or the logo is offensive for the Cle- for the uh, Redskins, Washington Redskins? Samuel. Well. Uh, well, Sam, what's your thoughts on this? I know well, you, I know you're deep into the Native American culture. <laughs> See, I think to me it doesn't sound offensive, but then again, I'm not Native American, so I really couldn't have a like. You're not. No, zero okay. percent actually. So maybe like if I was Native American, I'd probably have a better input. Into so you, have, you, just, you have no opinion right now. But I think that they should definitely consider it if it's offensive to a certain amount of people. Do you think they should take a vote, and if a certain amount of Native Americans say they don't like it, they change it? Or do you think the, well, or the do you population? think if it offends one person, it should be changed? No, not if it offends one person, but what's the population of Native Americans in Washington? Uh, Is there a whole bunch? Or? I, I don't know. You got me on that one. But you do have a phone call, so I do. go ahead and answer that one for us real quick. 
All right. Um, see, what I don't get, why was this not a debate years and years ago uh, when the Redskins came out? I'm sure it has been. I'm sure it's been a debate ever since, yeah. but it's just coming into the news again. And uh, I think that the, that the name is offensive. I don't think the logo is necessarily offensive. Right. But when you have a name like Redskins, uh, that sounds – I mean, that sounds kind of bad, you know? Yeah. When you got teams like the Cleveland Indians, that name sounds fine, but the screaming Indian logo they had sounds bad. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, I think that's all around fine. Chiefs right. isn't an offensive name at all. That's just, you know, that's normal. And then the logo is just a, in, in an arrowhead, right? Yeah. That's completely fine. The Blackhawks, that's just the name of the tribe. And the logo, I think, is very cool looking, very tough. Just like, you know, it's not cartoonish right i don't think like the old indians one was again and then the lake central indians they've been pressured recently to change their name they're talking about maybe changing it to the late i know i see the right. color <laughs> about me hold on cole we'll get to you in a second hopefully you're talking about this story so we can fluidity uh they're thinking about changing it to the lake central lakers maybe i've heard rhinos as a rumor going around, but all I know is they've stopped putting the logo on things. They've changed the letterhead at Lake Central, so there, it's definitely a possibility they will no longer be the Indians in, in the coming years. Yeah. I'll have to talk to my teacher friends, see if I got any more updates on that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take Cole. You are on the air. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're in luck. I am calling about the story for the fluidity, there we and go. Uh, <laughs> I. I don't think that the name should be changed. I, you know, like, I think people are being a little sensitive if they are offended by it. Like, I'm actually part uh, Native American, like, like really? not a lot. It's not significant. It's like 164th. <laughs> but still, like, it's, you know, the team name, it's kind of historical, whether it's, like, you know, maybe not the proper name for it. But there's other teams like that, too, for different types of cultures. Um, I understand the Vancouver Canucks. I think Canuck is a... Uh, slang term for Canadian or something, something yeah. like that. So, you know, I think people should just, you know, let it be. So you, you don't – but, see, I'm wondering where did the name come from if it wasn't directly related to, you know, just looking at the Native Americans and saying, oh, they have reddish-looking skin apparently. Let's call our team the Redskins. That in itself sounds kind of offensive, right? Mm -hmm. It's like calling a team the, the I don't know, Chicago white skin or something, you know. All right. I would think that would be people would find that offensive as well, right? Well, I mean, they would, but that's because everyone gets so offensive about stuff like that, and I think that we just kind of need to, you know, get over those things and just, you know, like, you know, like look at the color of people's skin and be like, oh yeah, well, yeah, you know, that kind of defines that tribe, maybe. Do you have a problem with uh, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Cleveland Indians or the Lake Central Indians? Um, aside from a high school ri rivalry with uh, Lake Central Indians, no, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, where, where'd you go to high school? Island. Oh, okay. I'm an, I'm an Indian myself, and I would hate to see the name changed. I don't think... Were they suggesting Rhinos? Is that what I heard? Yeah, Rhinos was a rumor. Uh, Lakers, because, you know, Lake Central. Um, I don't know. I think the name Indians is not offensive at all, first of all. And the logo we had, I don't think was offensive either. It was just a sideways Indian head, kind of like the Blackhawks type thing. Yeah. So I don't I don't know, but you know, with the the days the time that we live in right now, everyone gets offended by everything. So I guess you just got to pick which ones are more egregious than others, right? Right. All right, Cole. Thanks for the call. Looks like we got another caller on the line. Is Bob? Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. Hey. How's it going? Listen. Uh, uh, regarding the Blackhawks, that that was the tribe. That was that was an individual, uh, a leader, a uh, leader of the the Sauk, I believe. Oh, it's a black foot tribe, right? And it's a great autobiography, uh, uh, by the way. But uh, he was born in 1767 in Virginia Colony, and then he, uh, he led his people across Mississippi to resist further white encroachments. So it's just a little bit of information for you. Thanks for that. Um, do, you, okay. do you find any of the, the Redskins' name offensive or Cleveland Indians or Lake I Central Indians? I think you make an excellent point about there not being any connection to the Washington, D.C., area that, uh, well, you know, I guess pre-history or pre-European uh, invasion, there'd be a, there'd be a connection, but it, it doesn't seem appropriate to me, and I think, what well, is the global George Zimmerman because of the way we <laughs> drop drones on everybody and things like that? Sorry to be facetious, but uh, yeah, it, it doesn't seem appropriate to me. Yeah, it, I mean, I can, like Seminoles, if they were to change the name to that, 
I think that would be fine because that's just a you know a name that's not offensive in any way. But Redskins does seem yeah. kind of offensive to me. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, as far as the Native Americans, from from what I've read, it's it's a mixed bag. Of you know, some are offended by it, some don't really don't 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 care too much about it, or it's 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 not an issue to to them personally. So that's that's that's, just, that's my uh, two bets. You guys got a great show. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. Sure. Bye. All right, looks like uh, we got another caller on the line. Steve? Is that what he said? Steven? Uh, Dave? All right, let's take the call. Dave, Sam, you can write names down if you want on on your dry erase board. Hey, Dave. (laughs) uh, Yeah, I kind of – I love your show. I mean, I've actually been starting listening to it since last last week. I think you guys have a great topic, like, um, about the logos. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it it very much reminds me of the Zimmerman case, to think about it. It gets people talking, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I mean, this is the most calls we've had within a five-minute span <laughs> right now, talking about right. this Redskins thing. Well, um, keep it up, okay? Do you have an, uh, an opinion on this at all? Uh, well, I, I don't see the point. of Redskins is basically a cultural kind of name, if you think about it. I mean, it's very cultural. I, don't, I have no offense to that at all, to be honest. I mean, they, what, what's the whole point of thinking of racism there? I mean, for why people should get offensive by that. Yeah, um, I guess, I mean, I'm not Native American. I don't know if you are. Uh, I can't really speak for them. No, I'm black. Okay. Um, But the name, I don't know, just calling someone by their skin color in a team name just sounds, it just sounds bad, whether they take offense to it or not. So I'm completely fine with with, uh, them changing the name to either a tribe name or just, you know, something similar to where they can keep their logos and keep their kind of heritage, I guess, with the team, you know? Well, I, yeah, again, I see history in these logo names. I, again, like the Blackhawks, he named it after, what was that, like some about the World War One. Yeah, and, the last caller said I think it was it was either Chief Blackhawk or Yeah, Black Hawk or some just, about. Yeah. I heard it was some about World War One, so I, I'm just calling to let you guys know you guys are doing a great job, and I appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot, Thank Dave. Right. All right, we're going to take a break real quick. we got a caller on the line. We'll get to him just after this break. we got to do some news pay some bills and we'll be back in just a few minutes with the sports jam hang tight welcome back to the sports jam here on am 1230 wjlb before we get to tonto i want to tell you at the calumet Harley Davidson's 20th birthday bash is July 26th through the 28th. Store-wide specials include used bike blowout, a Humane Society pet adoption, bikini bike wash, pig roast raffles, free beer parts, swap prizes, and more. Do not miss this. See the motorcycle who belonged to a 70s icon that hasn't been seen since 1976. You know who that is? Nope. You know who that is? Nope. Evil. Knievel. No way. It is. That's what Pat Renwick told me. Is Robbie Knievel still alive? Not sure, but let's take Tonto on line six. Tonto. This Tonto. How are you? Not offended by name. No. More offended by awful Lone Ranger movie. (laughs) Is this Tonto the K? Tonto. Tonto is not offended. Tonto, you're not. Tonto more offended the rest is not good team. Are you a Redskins fan or are you a Chiefs fan? No, I don't know what I like football. Yeah, you don't like football? No violence. All right. Thanks for the call, Tonto. I don't know. Beach Pipe. All right. We will do. <laughs> Did not see that going anywhere well. All right. Uh, Should have known when we saw Should have, yeah. Should have even taken the call. <laughs> what? Is that the first Native American we've had on the show? Well, if you were listening five minutes ago, you would have seen the other caller we had said he was 164th Native American. So thanks for listening, Sam. All right. <laughs> As he usually does. <laughs> Let's do my onion sports stories Please. of the day. Oh, gosh. This story, speaking of Redskins, here we go. This story, doctors clear RG3's knee for light tearing. 
Calling it an encouraging sign for the 23-year-old, Redskins team doctors have reportedly cleared Robert Griffin III's knee to resume light tearing this week. Team sources confirm Wednesday, Robert's knee has healed to the point where we feel he can safely start damaging that ligament again, said orthopedist James Andrews, noting that Griffin should limit himself to simply overstretching at first before gradually easing into more challenging connective tissue ripping. Heading into August, we plan on having Robert tear his knee more severely each day so that the tendon can be 100% shredded by the time the season starts. Andrews added that if all goes well and according to plan, Griffin would be ready for season-ending surgery as early as week one or two. Mike, I hope, are you laughing because of the, the onion story? I'm laughing because of Tonto the K. <laughs> Still? Tonto the K. God, I thought that onion story was hilarious. Uh, it was. It sure was. Cool. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. I'm talking to myself here. No I problem. was listening. All right, let's uh, let's move out of this Jeopardy. Geez, Deadspin. I got a little oh. Jeopardy story from do, Deadspin. Do, I saw they posted a video. Do, 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 do. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I was I was enjoying that. All right. So Jeopardy last night featured a sports movie category. All they had to answer was what each sports movie belonged to. So they said uh, I phrased that completely wrong, but basically they described a movie or or the title of a movie, and they had to say what sport the title of that movie belonged oh, to, you yeah. know? They got them all wrong. <laughs> Give me Every some. single contestant got them all wrong. So I wrote them down for you guys. So, Sam, you're going to have to listen to our show for right now, if you will. Stop okay, crushing yeah, candies. All right, so the first question, Invictus. What sport does Invictus belong to, that movie? I have no clue. Uh, I think rugby. Yes, Sam nailed it. It's rugby. By the way, I've not shown either one of you guys these questions. Yeah. Unless unless you snooped. Nope. I'm right. snooping. I don't do any extra work, so. Question number two. The title is Senna. No idea. Nah. Auto racing. There's an auto racer with the last name Senna. That's mm-hmm. what that movie was about. Now, Mike, I know you're going to get this one. Number three. Goon, starring Sean William Scott. What hockey. is hockey? Hockey. Both of you got it. Sam's up nope, two to one. You missed it because you didn't put uh, it in the uh, question. So. What? <laughs> okay. Did not phrase in the form yeah, of a question. I, you were eliminated. I win. Dang. Number one. F- number four, crossover with Anthony Mackie. What is basketball? Ding, ding, ding. And Sam you know why is. Sam did so well? Because he was watching it earlier earlier before you got here. You have no proof. I heard the Jeopardy on there. Oh, okay. my God. And you still got center you wrong. Still no, got I, s- see, I knew it was auto racing. I just didn't want to show Oh, it. I didn't want to tip. Right. I didn't want to yeah. show Ryan Braun and lie to you guys. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. okay. I but see you, what you, you did, did, though, basically. You no, know, but I didn't, like, claim. Like Sam that. is now eliminated from all future so I win. Jeopardy games. I win. Mike wins by default. You still can't get past the, level the, the Matt, the the Matt crush, Kemp so. of this league will yes. win the MVP because Sam is a dirty, filthy cheater. Sam, you got a call. Am I suspended? Please answer that call, Sam. <laughs> so what do you got for us? All right, let's talk about this Dodgers story. Dodger Stadium now offers frozen beer foam to keep your drink cool. All right, technology in beer is exploding over the years. We saw now that they fill from the bottom up. I don't know what kind of witchcraft that is, but now we got frozen beer foam. Right. The story is also from Deadspin Barry Pacheski. Last month, the Dodgers introduced a frozen beer foam machine made by Japanese beer company Kirin. It is possibly witchcraft. Wow, I did not even know the article started that way when I said witchcraft. Anywho, continuing on. The foam is beer, pure beer, agitated in a machine and flash frozen to 23 degrees and swirled atop your glass or cup. The idea is to act as insulation, keeping the liquid beneath cool on a hot day at the ballpark, beer garden, or rooftop bar. The folks at Food Beast took a test run at this last weekend at Dodger Stadium. The process essentially breaks down into two easy steps for a bartender, or in this case, a newbie Dodger Stadium employee. Step one, pour the beer out of the tap. Normally, I would add tilt the glass, but because you're essentially topping a beer with a frozen head anyway, it doesn't really matter in this case. Step two, conjure your skills as a frozen yogurt employee because adding the frozen foam is aesthetically similar. We put the frozen foam to the test, and it did, in fact, keep our beers pretty cold for a few innings and the full 30 minutes. We didn't test the foam under multiple scenarios, but it seemed to work pretty well in the late afternoon, early evening on a sunny yet humid 80-degree-plus day in L.A. Pretty cool, huh? It is. The th- in theory, this is a really fantastic idea, but when we tried the other day at 
uh, summer beer garden. The only thing the foam, we only found that the foam was keeping us from drinking our icy cold beer fast. The foam was a lot stiffer than you'd expect, and the best way to get around it was to poke a hole in it, even if we got a little foam in our nose. Once the foam started to melt, and it does very slowly, it allowed the beer to flow in faster. So I guess it kind of blocked, you know, the flow. All right. So you can either choose to drink your beer really fast in case, in which case I don't think you'd care to keep it cold for 30 minutes if you're just going to chug it anyway. Right. Or if you're more a connoisseur of sorts and you want to slowly sip on that brew. And you get a frozen, uh, frozen legit. foam on top. Legit. Let's take the Lone Ranger online too. Uh, Just so you know, I fired Tonto. Oh yes, you did. You should never criticize the NFL. <laughs> Is this Mad Mac? Lone Ranger. <laughs> <Lone> Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I see what's going on here. Is your hearing okay? Uh, my hearing is fine. How, what do you think about the uh, the Redskins? The name. Love the Redskins. Love them, huh? Go to all their games? Every game. I do the tomahawk chalk at every game. Do you ever go to a Chiefs game? Tomahawk chop at those games also. Blackhawks tomahawk chop? Never tomahawk chop at Blackhawks. So, so wait, you go, you go from Washington to Kansas City within a couple hours and go to both those games? Uh, we didn't specify time frame. Oh, well, I'm just saying. My prior movies were great success, made fortune. Did All you right. like see my last movie? Uh, I don't think anyone did. Hmm. <laughs> that might have been the problem. You're going to have to make your money in the casino. I don't think the movie, the box office, really helped you out there. Too much Lone Ranger. I'm the Lone Ranger, not Tonto. I own no casinos. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the Pay call. Thanks for the call, Lone Ranger, a.k.a. I'm guessing Mad Mac. Uh, I believe it was. was saw first, the, uh, the first one, you think Larry the K? That's my guess. Okay. Tonto Probably. the K, sorry. T- uh, right, Tonto the K and and Mad uh, Mad Macahawk. There you go. go with. All right, so let's go on to our Cowboys story. Cowboys are going to lead the league in geometry exam scores. You know why? Because Jason Garrett is planning on teaching his whole team geometry. College boy, Jason no, Garrett. he's not. Are yes. you serious? Yes. L- listen to the story. Why? Sammy might want to pay attention. I actually here. watched it. You're probably in geometry class, right? I took it last year. Just How'd you do? A or B? Uh, I got a B. All right. Proud of you. Thank you. College boy, college boy, Jason Garrett, wants his team to spend some time in training camp brushing up on the Pythagorean theorem. His explanation, remarkably logical. It is an important thing to understand. If you're running straight from the line of scrimmage six yards deep, that's a certain depth. It takes you a certain amount of time. But if you're going from 10 yards inside and running to that same six yards, that's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. It's longer. So they have to understand that it takes longer to do that. That's an important thing. Quarterbacks need to understand that too. If you're running this route from here to get to that spot, it's going to be a little bit longer, so you might need a little bit fuller. You might, you might need to be a little fuller in your drop. We talked about Pythagoras, and it's going to last for a few days. The NFL playbook is already among the hardest things in the world to memorize. By the time Garrett gets to the non, or by, by the time he gets to geometry, they'll have forgotten what the post route is. Uh, what do you think of this strategy to have them all learn geometry? I well, mean, it can't make them any worse, can it? Uh, I don't think that it could, but I'm thinking that it, it, it. You know, a lot of these players, they're not they're not so educated. I would say, no, especially on the Cowboys. You've seen, you've seen their okay. I see. Shots right. fired. <laughs> we've seen their wonder lick scores, and some of these guys are real dumb. So, learning some geometry maybe actually help, and you know right. maybe they can actually figure out this, the fastest and most efficient way. Quickest point to A to B, straight line. So maybe they'll go ahead and do that. Um. Sounds like we're going to take a break. Mike's pushing me to a break. Uh, then we'll come back. I'll read my, you know what, I'll save the Seagull story about the Giants for tomorrow because it's kind of a long story. So we'll get some headlines right when we come back with Sam the intern. Welcome back to the Sports Jam here on AM 1230 WJOB. Let's go to Sam with some headlines. These headlines are brought to you by Safe Auto. Turns out you can use the internet to get a free quote on state minimum car insurance from Safe Auto. Just go to safeauto.com. You can also call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Drive safe. Spend less. 
headlines in sports today. Tim Hudson, ace of the Atlanta Braves, out for the year with a broken ankle after the Mets' Eric Young Jr. steps on his ankle as Hudson was covering first. This was a nasty play. Yeah, did you guys see this? The replay? Yeah, I just saw it. My show. Oh, show. Oh, gosh. It's it was disgusting. Bad looking. Yeah. It was definitely broken. I've seen some nasty broken ankles through sports watching over the years. This was really. Yeah, he was covering first. Uh, he took. He was His foot was on probably about half the bag, I would say. Yeah. Eric Young maybe could have avoided it, but I think he was lunging at the same time Hudson was landing on the bag, so he couldn't correct himself in there. But he landed right on right on the back of his ankle, and you just saw his foot go sideways and backwards. And if you see the replay that they show down the uh, first base line looking towards home plate, you see Eric Young, as soon as he lands on it, his mouth just opens, he screams, he you know, he gets past the base, he turns around, he runs back towards Hudson. Uh, he's putting his hand on him, telling him he's sorry, all that stuff. Hudson's on the ground just writhing in pain. And he was on the ground for a good 10 minutes before they got a cart out there, put him on a stretcher, just because obviously he couldn't walk on it. Right. And so they put him on a stretcher, took him off the field. Eric Young stood by the whole time. At, you saw a bunch of players from the Mets coming up and, and, you know, kind of patting him on the back and saying, you know, it's all right. You didn't, you know, we, we didn't, you know, you didn't mean to do it. It's, it's fine. No one's like, you know, mad at you. He felt so bad. They kept zooming up on his face uh, while Hudson was on the ground, and he just, he was sitting there. He was grabbing his, uh, his, his necklace around his neck, his um, cross. Yeah. And he was, I don't know, saying a prayer under his breath or whatever. But he was very shooken up by it. And then once Hudson finally got put on the stretcher, he went over there and shook his hand and said, "I'm sorry again." And then he started wiping his eyes. They don't know if maybe that was just sweat or the the announcer saying maybe he was tearing up. But either way, I've never seen a player more remorseful after injuring right. another player than that was right there yesterday. Yeah, so Hudson, was, Hudson will need surgery for the ankle fracture. He's out for the rest of the season, obviously. McCann came over and, and shook hands with Hudson, and Hudson was just shaking his head like, oh, not again. Yep. You know, he finally gets back. He's, you know, had some injuries in the past. He's having then, a great year, and too. And then a freak injury like this happens. It was just, he just feels like he's got all the bad luck on him right now. New York Yankees, Alex Rodriguez, comes up with a statement saying that he thinks the Yankees are against him. Brian Cashman, GM for the Yankees, replies by saying he wants A-Rod back as soon as possible. Well, I would think the team's against me, too, when Cashman comes out a month ago and says, shut the F up and all the other stuff he was saying. And and Alex, you know, all that stuff that was coming out. And I guess I heard yesterday maybe he's not, you know, they said he suffered a setback last week. But now they're saying maybe that was wrong, and he's A Rod saying he could play Friday, so it's kind of it's a weird situation that's going on. No one really quite knows what's happening. And clearly, clearly he's fallen out of favor there with the Yankees, and he if he's spending for life, then I guess that solves everything, right? Speaking as a fan, I I know that he's not well liked. You he's, hate A Rod, right? Oh, I do. The it's burning. A lot passion. of people hate A Rod. I think he's wow. not a he's not a likable guy. No, to be honest, right. like Jeter cares about his team. A Rod just does not. In my opinion, CNN's Pedro Pintos sat down to interview Derek Rose and asked the former MVP who is the best player in the game right now, and he replied without hesitation, Derek Rose, speaking in third person like Dennis Rodman. So he didn't say I am, he actually said Derek Rose. He said Derek Rose. Hmm. I saw ESPN or Sports Center, or maybe a Sports Center, probably Sports Nation. <laughs> Sports Nation <laughs> One of posted those. something on Facebook that had a picture. It said Derrick Rose, Derrick Rose's best athletes in each sport, and it showed in basketball picture of Derrick Rose, baseball picture of Derrick Rose wearing a White Sox jersey, uh, in, in hockey picture of Derrick Rose wearing a Blackhawks jersey, and then in football picture of Derrick Rose holding a basketball like a football and just running through the yeah. field. Uh, that was pretty funny. Yeah, he uh, for someone who was too scared to come back and – all that injury stuff and how they said he was cleared and blah, blah, blah. He's talking a big game, saying he's still the best after all that time off and after being such a baby about this injury. I don't know, kind of a bold strategy. We'll see if he loses any got to prove it before he can being talk, so in my arrogant. opinion. 37-year-old Chicago Cubs outfielder Alfonso Soriano tells team he would, he would waive his no-trade clause if he was dealt to the Yankees. Yeah, we talked about this earlier in the week. I definitely think he would accept a trade to the Yankees. Obviously, he just said he would, but 
you know, he, he played with the Yankees for a while. He had some great seasons with them. Uh, I think he would definitely, definitely want to go back there if it happened. I think he would also have a maybe a minor impact, but at least some impact on the Yankees since they're they're struggling to get. Their team is so old; it it would fit in perfectly for Soriano to go over there. Definitely. Would he play DH or outfield? Um, oh man! <laughs> see, I think they have so many injuries. I think he might have to play outfield as well. Really? But I think that you know Soriano might be in that DH role. But yeah, again, with, it's, he's not a future. At 37 sure. years old, he's definitely he's, in that DH. And I think that for the Yankees moving forward, I think they should give him a small contract. I think giving him a big contract would be a huge mistake considering his age. Well, he's still under contract with the Cubs, and they're going to have to pay most of it. Is that yeah, right? He's, he's owed uh, $18 million, I think, next season. Yeah. And the rumor was, when it was a couple of days ago, saying that they were close to a deal, the rumor was that the Cubs would pay, or the Yankees would cover the rest of this year, and then the Cubs would cover most of next year. So maybe, I don't know, $13, 14000000 $15 million of next right. year's deal that the Cubs would cover. And, you know, between him and Zambrano, they've, They've eaten a lot of money. Just, I mean, he has, he hasn't been traded yet, obviously. But if they trade him, that's a lot of money they're eating just to get rid of these guys. Yep, and that's all Shows on how Jim Hendry. That yeah, that's all on Jim Hendry making these really bad, awful decisions. He really dug a contracts. hole for, for the front office of. He, <laughs> he really did. does. He really he put did. them in a really bad spot. They're slowly digging out of it, or not digging out of it, but slowly getting out of the hole right now. But yeah, he put, he gave him some bad contracts. Yep. Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers quarterback, last year tweeted that if Ryan Braun is guilty, he would forfeit his 2013 salary. Should he forfeit it? And he hashtag pay up. Mm-hmm. I think he should pay for it. Yeah. He should, you I tweeted mean, it, you better pay up. Well, yeah. We should have. What's his contract for next year? I forgot to look it up. Uh, I probably, thought it was like three and a half million dollars. Pretty penny, I would no, say. No, it's got to be more. That's than what that. I saw. Was that no, it's three more and a half? That's three what and I'm telling. bit thirteen and a half. I, yeah. That doesn't sound. That right. didn't yeah, sound that. right to me, but that's what I saw: three and a half or thirteen and a half. I, uh, I would venture it's more, but either way, that's a lot of coin mm-hmm. for him to be coughing up. I think what will happen is, just to appease the media and the fan, he'll send him an autographed jersey, autographed football, autographed cleats, something. He'll just send him some swag, just to get him off the case. No, He's Eric, not going to send him his whole 2014. Why payroll, would you send it to him? Thirteen though? contract. Huh? Why would you send it to him? Because he was replying to someone on Twitter. Oh, you mean giving it to the person that he replied to on yeah, Twitter? Yeah. Oh, I he, thought you were talking about giving it to Ryan Braun. I was going to say. No, that. no, 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 no. This tweet, what this tweet that he tweeted out last year, was in response to somebody on Twitter. He said to this guy, "He should. He should if, give him something." Yeah. So, I mean, he also didn't specify. Maybe he'll give it to charity. You know, Sam, you tell the story. You should probably look up all the, st- the facts on that one. <laughs> That is also true. Just saying. Million, yeah, though. just because you're reading headlines doesn't mean you stop after the headline. <laughs> <laughs> you can look up a little more on that. Moving on. Moving on. Yes, we got a few seconds. Here Cardinals well. defensive tackle Darnell Dockett wants to bring a pet tiger to training camp. Mike Tyson asked. Yeah, he, he Tiger's name is Little Buddy. He's a 60 pound tiger, described by Dockett as very chill and very playful. He also tried buying a pet monkey for $30,000, but the owner of the monkey said no dice. He would not sell it to him. Uh, is it any surprise that athletes run out of money so quickly when they're buying $30,000 monkeys? Mm-hmm. You know? Definitely, yeah. What else you got for us real and quick? We got the about Cowboys a minute. and AT&T agreed on deal to, name the new st- to rename the stadium AT&T Stadium. Yep. It looks like they'll pay about $16 million a year. I guess the rumor was $25 million when they first built the stadium, but I guess that number's gone down. Then again, it was only a rumor, so maybe it was never even true in the first place. All right, that's going to do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow at some point. There's a live remote we just found out about tomorrow. Yeah, at 11 o'clock. I'll be in studio for that. And I think they said it's running till 2.30. 2.30, so. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll do our show at 3.30. Maybe we won't do it. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. We'll, there will be, be some programming on tomorrow at 2 o'clock, so stay tuned for that. We got uh, Jed Flashbacks coming up right now, hosted by your boy Mike Zajac, produced by Sam and I, doing traffic and weather, and then the afternoon fix at 4. Stay tuned. <laughs>